Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we're at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is what is the AI practitioner? So this is an AI certification teaching you the foundational knowledge of AI cloud workloads, AWS offerings around traditional ML pipelines, AWS offerings around managed AI services, AWS offerings around Gen AI and large language models with course code. Here is the AI, AIF CO1, so make sure you check the course code so you know that you're using the latest course. Uh, consider the certification if you want to become an AI engineer or a data scientist or you have to work with um, uh, AI stuff in your developer job. If you don't know what an AI engineer is, it's someone that builds AI solutions using managed AI services, but could also be building uh, ML uh, pipelines or working with data scientists um, uh, to some degree. You will want this uh, certification if you're looking to architect business use cases for ML AI Gen AI. This certification is more focused on the C-suite and decision makers to help them buy into the AWS ecosystem for AI ML. But I'm gonna cram in a bunch of developer stuff because I know that people wanna do this for real and not just talk about it. Um, if you enjoy the following tasks, like stats and maths, working with data, working with Python, then this is uh, a career path for you. If you don't, <laughs> you better watch out here because uh, this stuff creeps up on you uh, unexpectedly. But for generative AI, it's not so much an issue. Here's our AWS certification roadmap. And you know, again, this is just a suggestion. There, you can do these in any order that you want, but I strongly suggest that before you do AI practitioner, do the cloud practitioner because a lot of those skills are expected uh, for this, okay? Um, and I just need to remind you that AWS certifications do not validate programming, technical, diagramming, code management, and many other technical skills that are required for obtaining technical roles. So do not assume that when you get a cert, you can do the job. It's part of your learning journey, yes, of course, but uh, you need to really make sure that you can do the skills. Um, how long will it take to pass? Well, if you're a beginner, 20 hours. If you're experienced, five hours. This is not a hard certification. I probably made the content harder than it had to be, but I wanna prep you, you know, for your roles to, in actually being able to do this stuff. You're looking at about 10 hour average study time. Spend half your time with lecture and labs, other half with practice exams. Recommending you study one to two hours for possibly 14 days. Again, it won't take long to get through this course watch the lecture content, do the hands-on lab. Now this certification doesn't require any hands-on experience, but I really think that you should do it because uh, uh, in practice versus on paper are two completely two different things. The labs are not hard here and it will really help cement your knowledge. And in some cases, I'm keeping the lecture slides light because we're gonna be doing the lab. So even if you don't do them, watch what I do so you get at least that experience there get paid practice exams because this one has new exam question types. Uh, and people said that uh, it was, it threw them off, right? So, um, you know, you can go over to the exam pro platform, get your free practice exam. We also have paid ones. Um, and you can find that at forward slash AIFC01. Buy those paid ones, support more of this free content. We really appreciate your support. And this stuff is hard to make. So um, let's talk about the domains for the exam. There are five domains. Each domain has its own weighting. This is determine how many questions that will show up in the domain. Uh, so for domain one, we have fundamentals of AI and ML. Domain two, we have fundamentals of Gen AI. Domain three, we have apps, applications of foundation, uh, foundation models. I love just saying applications is apps. And by the way, this is not a spelling mistake. I copy and paste it. It's foundation models, but foundational models is also correct. Um, domain four is guidelines of responsible AI. And domain five is security compliance governance AI solutions, which there's not a lot to talk about. So they really overemphasize it when there's not much to say, but these two categories is all gen AI. So I put a lot of gen AI in this course. Amazon Bedrock is done end to end for this. Um, so you're, you're in really good shape. I probably have the best course for, um, for the AI practitioner for the Bedrock stuff, okay? SageMaker, uh, I do an okay job of it. SageMaker um, used to be SageMaker Studio Classic and they've migrated over to this new experience which is not very good. And so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of grumpy when making the content for SageMaker because I miss the old experience and I, I, I think AWS has kind of uh, not done a good job uh, re reimagining that solution. But anyway, where do you take this exam? In person or online? Uh, AWS uses Pearson and View uh, for their proctored online exam system and also for their, uh, their test network. PSI is gone. If you remember PSI from a long time ago, AWS is not using them anymore. The experience with PSI hasn't been great, but I also think the reason why AWS is going with a single provider now is just that they can leverage that platform to its maximum and uh, add new, new features like exam question types, which we'll talk about in a moment. A proctored 
uh, is someone that watches the exam. So the idea is they're there to make sure you do not cheat. So understand that is the component in the test experience. The grading here is 700 out of 1,000 for a passing score. I put an asterisk there because it's around 70% because it, it must use a scaled scoring. You could technically fail at 70%, right? So always aim for higher. Um, there are 65 questions for this exam, 50 scored, 15 unscored. You can get a, uh, 15 scored questions wrong. There's no penalty for wrong questions. Format of questions, multiple choice, multiple answer, but also uh, ordering, ordering, matching, and case studies for this exam for sure. So um, right now the exam is in beta at the time that they make this video. So they might change and get rid of those questions because people don't like them, but understand that ABUS is trying new exam type questions. And you'll experience this. Our platform simulates them. So you'll be in good shape if you use our practice exams. Not all providers can even simulate things like case studies. We absolutely have that in spades and we've been doing that well before this. So it was just coincidental that ABUS decided to do that. Uh, 50 questions are on the exam are unscored. They will not count towards your final score. Why are they unscored? Unscored questions are used to evaluate the introduction of new questions to determine if the exam is too easy and the passing score or question uh, difficulty needs to be increased. Discover users who are attempting to cheat. Okay, so there's lots of reasons why they do this. If you encounter questions you've never studied or that seem really hard, keep your cool. Remember, they may be unscored questions. The duration of the exam is 2.5 hours. You get about 1.5 minutes per question. Um, there is 120 minutes with 150 minute seat time. Seat time refers to the time you should allocate for the exam. So this includes reviewing the instructions, showing up for online uh, proctored, uh, on, showing up for the proctor to look at your workspace, reading, accepting the NDA, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end. If it seems like I'm tired, it's because I shot this three times. My microphone wasn't on, and so <laughs> my voice is kind of wearing out. But we'll get through this, okay? The, uh, the exam is valid for 36 months and three years before recertification. I don't really know that for certain because at the time of this exam, they didn't say that, but the general rule is that certs for AWS is always three years. If you're gonna get recertified, it's gonna be, um, you probably get it for free through AWS Skill Builder. They're always trying to do that. Let's have some real talk about certifications. I have to remind you that cloud certifications expect you to have foundational technical skills like programming, scripting, SQL, IT networking, Linux, Windows servers, project management, developer tools, app development skills, comp sci algorithm skills, and more. If you do not have these skills and you get these certs, you cannot do the job, right? This only teaches you how to do ML, AI on the AWS platform, but it's missing a lot of stuff. Uh, and AWS likes to position this certification as a fund fund fundamental exam, but I find there's tons of gaps with this one. I'm producing my own uh, f uh, foundational generic uh, a Gen AI certification to really fill the gaps here. But, you know, to fill the gaps, leverage Free Code Camp and their large catalog of general technical content. And we at Exam Pro also make additional uh, materials uh, beside the certification to really help you there. That's only available in the subscription. Okay. AWS itself does not care about AWS certifications for hiring for their own technical roles. Certifications serve as a structured way of learning with a goalpost. Now, originally certification actually mattered back in 2016, 17. If you had an AWS certification, we're talking about it. Companies took notice, but now it's more of a learning path thing. Newer certifications can be more valuable. So the reception of the AI practitioner might be more valuable, uh, but I don't know at this point. So I don't want to give you false hope and considerations, but you still, it's good to learn this stuff and, and stuff like that. Understand that you might need to add 250 to 500 hours beside the certification to have the developer knowledge to perform the stuff here or AI knowledge, if you will. So, you know, again, just consider there's additional work to be done if you want to work as an AI engineer or data scientist. Um, we are gonna add hands-on labs to help you fill the gaps here. So if you see me taking due tours and it seems like we're doing long labs, I'm trying to help you out here. You can watch them and not do them if you want, but really, you really should do them because I'm giving you real world skills here and you folks keep saying that you want it, so I'm giving it to you. So some of the labs might even uh, end up in failed implementations. Uh, not for this certification. I think there was only like one that, I, that, that was bust and it wasn't my fault. It was just, yeah, I think we're trying to do fine tuning on Amazon Bedrock and so it just wasn't clear the spend and I just did not want to end up with a $5,000 bill or something crazy. So I did show the process and I, I did tell you that, but. Uh, this one has next to no failures, just the one there. But understand that it's it's about 
seeing the problems, seeing what's worth using, seeing what's not worth using, because these certifications are marketing tools to convince you to utilize them. But I'm here as your uh, community hero, and I actually am an AWS community hero, to tell you the real truth about these services and which ones you should use and, and maybe avoid. And I want to be really clear with that. Uh, we do try our best to clean up infrastructure, but you should always be proactive and check if the resources are running. You're responsible for the cost and spend your AWS account. In the AWS um, practitioner course, I show you budgeting and stuff. I'm not showing you in this course, but I do in this one. And by the way, in this course, I actually had unexpected spend. I usually don't have it, but I had it with a SageMaker Canvas. It was like almost $400, $500 Canadian because it's US dollars converted afterwards. And uh, it's just one of those services where they really, really misled you, uh, not intentionally, but like because the UI was so bad. And I, I really pointed out, and I even tell you, don't use SageMaker Canvas and just watch me do it. So be very careful with spend, but I do my best, but you are responsible. Just remember that, okay?